Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TNG and I'm back with a brand new video. This time we're back at Nürburgring and this race was one that had to be won strategically and guys, man, we, we, we messed up, man. We had good pace in this race as well. Um, I was actually in the Audi, you can see Dowking just ahead of us on the right hand side in the Aston Martin and trust me lads, this was a good, good race and it could have been so much better because we actually had decent pace, man. Um, definitely have always gotten well with the Audi and this circuit in particular so of course me wanting to really have a good performance and see if I could actually get on the podium in LFM or even go for the win even but you can see here on the start I knew Darkin would probably not get the best of starts because the Aston is so slow off the start you can see we get a pretty decent launch and straight away we think you know what I'm going for it mate <laughs> I'm sending it I, I kind of um, expected the BMWs to have oh, good race pace, um, but we just threw out the inside, man, and tight corner, we managed to get on the throttle really quickly and actually jump both of the BMWs ahead and Dowking, so we made three positions up on the first lap before turn one, pretty much, and um, as you can see, if you can see on the weather radar, it's actually going to be raining any minute any minute now so I didn't really know what to do in terms of what I should do with the strategy should I just you know stretch it out on the dry tires should I come in for wets um it was going to be a difficult one and you're going to see in a minute what we decide to do um trying to keep up with the guys in front they, they actually the guy in the Honda in the lead he qualified a good a good way down the road so I expect him to be quite fast compared to our pace inside the race but with these weather conditions i wasn't too sure how they would um fare up um, i expected the porsche to be quite good if it did start raining and honestly this was my first race of last week in lfm one, one of my first so i wasn't even sure what my pace would be in the rain i didn't really have a wet setup or anything so it pretty much was just balls to the wall and just see what sticks see what happens and see if i could get a good result from where we were we qualified quite well as normally I do tend to qualify pretty well here and I tried the I did try the Bentley I think when the Bentley was a slow round here and it's pretty sad because I used to be pretty fast in the Bentley on this track man but um whatever the latest BOP is for the Bentley around Nürburgring it just does not seem to have the pace it used to so um I, I jumped back in the Audi and the Audi felt pretty nice and um Yes, you can see us on the first lap. We managed to stick with those guys, but Dowkin's right behind us. I didn't actually want to fight because I thought if we started fighting, um, the cars in front would get away. So I let I decided to let Dowkin go, and that way I could see what he did in strategy because it seems as if we had a little bit of extra pace compared to the other guys outside of the top four. So I was sort of using him as a varumpa of what we should do because I literally was not sure at all. I didn't have any real tire pressure set up, so I just decided, you know what? I'm going to let Dalkin go in front. If he can stick with the guys in front and maybe if they start battling, that's going to help us stay with the pack and I can make my decision on what to do in terms of um, with strategy, depending on what the guys in front do. If they all jump into the pits, then I know, you know, pretty much let's follow them and, you know, make sure we just, we're not at a horrible offset because there's nothing worse than when you feel like you've got the complete wrong end of the stick in a race and the strategy's just gone gone to gone to shit. So um pretty much that's where we were. But I was pretty happy with the pace. As I said, um Audi and me around this track. Decent lads. Decent. Um But there were there were other other YouTuber streamers in this lobby. I believe Chupa Getty was also in this lobby as well. Um and this is this is one of the interest, more interesting LFM races because it's not often you do a 25 minute race and you get weather conditions changing in that short space of time. So it's the first LFM race that I've had where the weather has changed in the 25 minute period where we're racing. So it was quite interesting, man. And I wasn't too sure what people would do. The only thing I had to sort of focus on was just to make sure I didn't get completely dropped by the guys in front. As you can see, we're, we're a little bit out of shape going into that chicane. Um, definitely for me, with my setup at the moment, that the last sector is probably the weakness that I have around this circuit. Everywhere else, the car feels great, um, but the last sector can be a little bit sketchy. Getting the car turned into that fast chicane, which is, has always been a tricky chicane um, throughout the years on ACC. But anyway, um, now still trying to keep on to the back of the cars in front 
not proven that easy. Dowking definitely seems to have pace um, all over the guy in the Porsche. The guy in the Honda not getting away as much as I thought he would. So I was actually pretty happy because I thought this is a lot closer and if they do battle, I'm definitely going to be in the mix. And the Audi tends to have a, probably a little bit more straight line speed than some of the other cars down the straights around here. So I was feeling like if I can get close to, to maybe Dakin and the guy in the Porsche, I, I might have a straight line speed advantage. Um, and we will just see if I can make anything happen. But really do like this track, man. One of my favorite tracks. I always feel like it's just a very satisfying lap to get a lap right. Very satisfying track. Great corners. Um, a lot of acceleration zones. So you kind of have to make sure, you know, you haven't got your, your setup where your traction's continuously cutting in. It does tend to slow you down quite a bit. Um, but I was, I was pretty happy, man. I was feeling good about the race. Just trying not to make any mistakes because I knew the rain was coming. Um, and that was where I started to think, oh, I hope this setup works in the rain. I hope I don't bin it. I hope I don't make any mistakes. I don't know how heavy the rain's going to be, whether the track's going to, how long it's going to take the track to get fully wet. So, um, yeah, always a tough one, man. Always a tough one. But, as I said, very fun and very different from the norm of what we're used to when we do LFM. Again, one of the main things is you can see the rain starting to come now and this is why I put my windscreen wipers on manual because sometimes like you need to see how much it is raining for you to, before you choose when to actually pick because sometimes you can as soon as your windscreen, windscreen wipers start going you automatically think okay it's wet enough to just pit now and that's not always the case man sometimes you've got to wait a lap or two so I always leave my windscreen wipers on manual so I can see how wet it is how much the rain's coming down and then I can choose when to you know going to the pits or, 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 or not going to the pits depending on what I choose to do but um, already the car's getting slippery already the back end starting to step out a little bit braking zones are extending um, a little bit more understeer for the corners and you'll see it as from this lap to the next you know we have to brake a little bit earlier down gear a little bit more into some of the corners and just have to be careful man trying to find that limit on the first lap that it starts raining and you're trying to find the limit to still be fast and consistent but not make a mistake it's probably one of probably one of the more difficult skills in acc when you're racing at a decent level anyway um to be able to just find the limit straight away a very very hard thing to do but you gotta do it without making a mistake man and i was starting to think oh should i touch this should i touch the outside curve should i get on the curves it's a bit i don't know it's a bit treacherous man i don't want to risk anything and uh yeah, you can already see guys up ahead also having the same sort of conundrums that I'm having. Trying to keep it away from the curbs because I, I just knew. I, and I know what I'm like. <laughs> I know my luck. It just takes me once just to touch the curb and all of a sudden I will find the wettest curb on the whole circuit and I'll be backwards somewhere. And I didn't want to lose any LFM points as we go too deep into the chicane again. And pretty lucky that the Audi tends to ride that second bump pretty well otherwise i probably would have been spat into the wall by now if i was in a ferrari i would have died a long long time ago but so far so good we definitely lost a lot of time on that last lap but we are still alive which is the most important thing um like a like a two second gap two and a half second gap um pretty difficult to close down now but still hoping that they will battle and you know something might happen that can bring us back into the race um but we're just going to keep on trying to make sure we stay consistent that's the hardest thing in these conditions is to actually stay consistent without making a mistake especially when you could technically be on the wrong tires as wet tires supposedly are optimal and i don't know if it was a little bit too hasty to jump into the pits now still felt like there was grip out there but at the same time i felt like there was also a mistake out there as well and sometimes you just gotta weigh it up man you have to weigh it up like will i make back this 40 plus seconds i'm gonna lose in a in a full pit stop um if it doesn't you know if the weather continues like this and i actually thought the weather was getting wetter and wetter and wetter so you know why not why not risk the pit stop if it does get wetter or 
if we, if we lose a certain amount of time, why not risk the pit stop? And the other guys, they'll be left skating around, trying to stay on the track and stuff like that. Um, you just never know, man, especially when the race is so short. If this was a 45 minute race, then I think it would be pretty easy to decide, to decide what to do. Um, problem was, although it was quite grey, the temperature wasn't, it wasn't that cold. I think when it's really cold, it's always best to just, you know, if it's drizzling, just jump, jump onto the, uh, jump onto the wet tyres. As we come into the pits, he saw Dalkin going in, and I thought, you know what? I think, I think this might be the right call. Let's jump into the pits and see if we can get back some of those guys who are not pitting. See if we can make some time because as the track gets wet, they're going to be losing a lot more time. And all it would take is one or two laps of them guys not pitting, coming in too late, and we would have easily have jumped them. But of course, what did I do? I completely and utterly messed up the pit stop. I haven't done a pit stop in ages, guys. My bad. So we definitely would have lost another three or four seconds on Dowking in that section, which is pretty annoying because we were having a good race up until then. So you can see how much ground we've actually lost um, to Dowking. We lost about four seconds, man. We're about 2.7, 2.5 seconds as we went into the pit stops. And now we, we're back to about 6.2 seconds behind, which is pretty sad man we lost a lot of time in that pit stop but that's what happens man when you don't spot your marks in the pit stops you lose a lot of time man even though it seems like your car is only being moved slightly it does take a while which is so annoying on this game i'm not gonna lie very annoying but it is what it is um maybe i should have practiced pit stops but as i said before you're not expecting really to have to make a pit stop in these 25 minute races but we did so um on we go and in this section of the race, I actually had pretty good pace, man. I did start closing down the gap to Dalkin quite a bit. And I wanted to see if we could catch any of the guys in front, man. Because I take it some of those guys would have stayed on dries. Some of those guys may have started on wets. Who knows? But if they did start on wets, their wets would be absolutely shredded by this stage. So we should be taking a good chunks out of them at the moment. You can see, actually, Trooper Gay is ahead of Dowking at the moment. And um, we managed to already take about four tenths out of Dowking on this lap. And um, I want to see how fast the guys were in front of that, if we could maybe catch them up, because it did seem like we were pretty much one of the only ones who pitted. And we dropped back down to 19th or 20th. And I was starting to think, OK, um, let's see how fast we can catch the field. And if we're catching the field at maybe four or five seconds a lap, then maybe we've gone for the right strategy because technically it should only take us around about six laps you know to to claw back the deficit but if the guys ahead are still lapping very well then it's, it's gonna be tough but then we saw a few people pitting so i started to think okay maybe maybe we did hit the nail on the head with the pit stop because i started seeing people in the pit stops and um but it was only about four people so it was like hold on a second <laughs> This, this is not as many people as I thought. So I started to think, okay, I, I guess a lot of people did start on the wets and maybe just conserve their tires, which would have which would have been the reason why we did pull such a big gap on the um, on the guys behind us. And yeah, um, unfortunately, it looks as if we are going to have to catch the pack. And some of those guys are 20 plus seconds in front. You know, it would be very tight and depending on what their lap times were, because, you know, it's quite a big gap to close up. You sort of have to have no traffic, perfect laps. And when you catch people, to be able to overtake them instantly without getting held up, um, that's the only way we're going to get back to anywhere near where we finished, um, where we started the race or where we all were on the first lap. But um, again, you can see we are closing the gap down to um, Chupagetti and jay loys in front of him i couldn't quite see the timer for the guy in front of that so i didn't know how much we were catching him um but it felt as if we were we were prodding along quite nicely 10 minutes to go so um we've got you know we've got opportunities there but you know with only with only four or five laps to go it was gonna be tough to you know tough to get that position back where we were originally on the first lap we were in the podium spots before letting Dowking through but we were definitely in the podium fight um but it just 
wasn't anymore, man. It was definitely tough. But you can see, look, the gap to Hamlin behind is like 15 seconds, 16 seconds even. And he wasn't that he wasn't that far behind in the early stop. So in hindsight, for anyone who decided to pit now, we have taken absolute chunks out of their advantage or in our undercut we took a lot of time out Dakin has a 205-0 I do a 203-8 Dakin just taking a little bit longer to get used to the conditions because there were definitely areas that were a little bit tricky especially if you got it wrong on the braking and um, now we managed to get the gap down to 4.3 seconds and he is catching Chupagetti all the time also catching the guy in the Audi in front as well so it's definitely getting very, very tetchy. Um, they're about 10 seconds in front and we are coming at them like three or so seconds per lap. So um, we should be able to, to get onto the back of them, but whether we can pass them or not is a, a different question. Um, also as well, I could see, I could see how quickly Dalkin was catching as well. So I thought maybe if he battles them, I might be able to get I might be able to get them, but you can literally see them up front. They're nose to tail, just going through the Dunlop, um, the Dunlop curve. So let's see what we can do. Let's see if we can close the gap down. It was definitely closing. Um, I actually enjoyed these conditions. Man. I felt the conditions actually suited the car quite a bit, or at least suited myself. Um, normally, I wouldn't say I'm the greatest in the rain. Well, not these rain conditions anyway. I prefer the, you know, the real heavy stuff, the real downpours where you got to properly tiptoe. That's the kind of conditions that I love. But um, yeah, normally I'm not so fond of this sort of light rain, which is mixed dry tires, wet tires, and intermediate tires. It's, it's just, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's just not the condition. Because these conditions, they don't really suit either tire 100%. Obviously there is no intermediate tire but it's intermediate conditions, you know? Um, so that's why I don't really enjoy these conditions that much because I don't feel like there actually is a right tire to be on. You know what I mean? Um, but anyway, darking in front, they're doing 206s, 207s. We're doing 204 so again, another two and two point something seconds closing the gap. And um, I did think we, we probably will end up catching them by the end, but you know, in terms of getting back to our positions where we were, I don't quite think that's going to happen. I feel like the gap's too big. I feel like some of the guys are lapping probably within a second or so. So, yeah, you're just, you're just not making up a deficit of 40 plus seconds when you take a pit stop. Um, obviously, 30 seconds for the pit stop, but then it takes you time to drive down the pit lane at reduced speed as well. So, um, yeah, it just wasn't going to happen. I want to see if we can recover maybe a top 10. Um, but still, guys, we're in 17th position. Only about four people pitted, so it's not great. Um, and all the people that pitted were behind us anyway, so it didn't really matter. Um, and the guys who stayed out, obviously going to jump us. Um, I'm not sure what strategy they went for. I'm not sure if they just went with dry tyres and just stuck it out or whether they actually started on the wets because I didn't really see anybody in the pit lane at the start of the race so a um, little bit confused but definitely closing the gap to the guys in front now the gap down to 5.8 seconds 5.6 5.4 4.7 4.8 with Dowking so we are closing on all the guys in front Dowking's now catching the guys at an awkward place as well so I was pretty sure he was going to start losing time here if he got stuck as they were battling as well. Um, and this is where I just had to stay concentrated and make sure I didn't make any mistakes. But they actually went off. The guy in Audi goes off. Chupagetti also must have went off as well or got caught up or slowed down by the incident because he's lost a mountain of time and that actually helped Dalkin get through. And I was like, oh man, that's just literally just... That's messed me up because it's going to take time to... To, to get past um, you can see on his last lap he did a 2 minute 09 so he definitely was compromised at the last corner with whatever the incident with the Audi was or whatever happened to the guy in the Audi um, so now you can see we've got so much more grip um, he must have been maybe on the dry tyres because we had so much more grip you see he gets on that outside AstroTurf 
and just no grip. Actually, is he on the wets? He might be on the wets, but as I explained before, if you go on the wet tires too early when the track's dry, it just completely and utterly kills him. And there's just nothing you can do. You just you just have no grip. And you can see he's gonna be skating around because he just doesn't have the corner grip because the tires are pretty much done. So I just take wide entries into the corner so I can get a good run. He doesn't really fight it because he knows that the tire advantage is is a lot different, you know? Um, so we get down the inside, keep it nice and tight. And we're through. Um, as I said, Jupiter didn't fight it too much because obviously his tyres were pretty much knackered by that stage. Um, four minutes to go in the race, and we're still pushing on. We're still, we didn't lose that much time actually um, to Dowkins, up to about five seconds. But he's now fighting the guy in the Porsche, and Dowkins passes the guy in the Porsche. Um, so yeah, he's making his way back through the field, but in front of that, the next person, 16.1 seconds. And yeah, you're not doing that in three laps. So um, yeah, pretty much this was the last fight I really had on, but I really wanted to catch this guy because yeah, I mean, at least, at least we can um, get through as much cars as we could or make as much impression as we can into the uh, guys in front but as I said there wasn't really much we could do and we, we we definitely chose the wrong strategy on this one because I feel like we could have at the very least held fourth position where we were if we just stayed out but um, I just you know I overcompensated for the weather conditions I think it wasn't wet enough and I don't think it was you know cold enough to make the, the wet tyres the viable choice, man. Um, and in hindsight, what I should have done is I should have upped the, the uh, dry tyre pressures, like overinflated the tyres, closed the brake ducts down, and kept the tyres warm that way and just stayed on the dryers the whole race. Maybe I could have, I would have sacrificed a little bit of speed at the start of the race to be good throughout the rest of the race without having to waste time in the pit lane, man. Um, pretty unlucky, but you can see how quickly we're catching the guy in the Porsche. Definitely a big offset between our tyres. Um, that was the good feeding. It felt like we were literally the fastest guy on the track or the fastest two cars on the track just coming through and there wasn't really much people could do to defend it because we just had a massive tyre advantage. Um, and that, that did feel pretty decent, but it would have felt even more decent to stay up in that top four, top three positions fighting for the uh for the podium but i'm sure we'll get another chance um i think this week on at lfm is bathurst and you guys know my history of bathurst bro it's just <laughs> ain't nothing good comes from bathurst bro that all that is is just loss of safety rating in elo i don't think i'm cut out for that bro so i, I must stay well clear <laughs> of bathurst i must stay well well clear all right but as we catch up to the guy in the Porsche, um, thinking where I could get him, you can see he's wide into the chicane. Can't really carry much speed for the corners, does not have the grip. Um, so I start trying to size him up, get a run down the street. But he's actually parking the car in the, in the, uh, in the apexes pretty well. Doing a pretty good job. Um, going defensive. And I wanted to see if he'd overshoot this corner, so I faced as if I'd break there, but I actually broke pretty yeah, early right. and um, cut back on the inside. But he got it slowed down very nicely indeed. Um, again, I'm going to try going on the outside. Try to turn in tight, but the, the grip just wasn't there, man. It just washes out. And he defends from me as much as he can. Um, I go out wider again, trying to cut back underneath, but all to no avail, he's blocking the line very well, knows where to put his car, very adept at defending his position. Um, so now it's time for me to become creative and see where I can maybe um, push for a mistake or make right. him defend something he doesn't right. need to. But he's taking lines that he can easily defend at the okay. moment. Um, on the Give it all you can. Down we go into this hairpin again. And this is a place I feel like I could dive down the inside, but if I get it wrong, I'm going straight into the gravel. And we try and force our nose up the inside, try and force a little side-by-side -side action, but the door gets closed instantly. And now you see where all the grip, all the difference in grip, 
through the SS section and his car is definitely sketchy and he's, he starts defending. This is, the, this is the mistake he makes. He defends early on the inside, the makes the corner so much tighter. We go around the outside, bumping doors just a little bit, but I'm able to keep my car on the inside. And there you go with a decent move down the inside. I knew I would have more traction as well. So I literally just made sure I could straighten up the car as quick as possible and just get my foot down. And yeah, managed to make the move stick. Um, pretty clean as well from J. Lloyd, man. Very clean, especially when you're fighting for your position right at the end of the race. Normally, people tend to get a little bit, a little bit dirty, but that guy was never dirty. He was clean, um, and yeah, it was just some some good racing, man. Some good racing, but yeah, guys, man, it was it was a tough race, and all I wanted to do now was just pretty much set the fastest lap I could do in these in these wet conditions because. It's only, this was the last lap. Um, we definitely we lost Dalkin. We were battling with Jay Lloyd. It was just we lost mountains of time, man. So much time, literally in one lap. Um, but it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You know, we're still happy about the pace. Um, Could have made better strategic calls, I think. I kind of focused on what what Dalkin was doing a bit too much. I just naturally thought he'd probably he'd, he'd get it right, you know. <laughs> but we ended up both being wrong. Ended up both messing up the strategy and messing up our chance of actually, you know, racing for the win or for the podium or whatever. And uh, yeah, you can see how far we are behind the leader. The leader has just finished. Bear in mind, we were less than that three seconds behind the leader. That is insane. Insane. How much time we lost in the pit lane, man. It's crazy and the leader was probably doing decent pace as well um but yeah just just shows you with one bad strategy call how you can literally just destroy a good result um i think i probably probably lost a bit of elo in this race but i did out qualify some guys who were supposed to be quicker than me so i don't think it was too bad i don't think it was too bad at all but you know opportunity for a good result gone and <laughs> I wish now that I just just stayed out and just, just bra braved it out even though I thought it, it felt like it was getting sketchy it felt a little a little a little tense um, going through some sections of the circuit but we get to the end of the race and we're gonna bring it home in 13th position and yeah guys literally probably about a, about nine ten places behind where we think we could have been and yeah that's about it man um do hope you enjoyed the video i haven't done any live streams this week as the world cup has been on and i just yeah trying to stream with the world cups on at the same time it just doesn't really make a lot of sense for me but um i will be getting back on it soon um and hopefully i will see you guys there man um catch you guys in a bit take care and peace